and gentlemen, Leo Julio Rancier over here. Thank you for watching this. I'm here with Sophie. Sophie is a German Shepherd and uh, I've been uh, working with her. Now, there she is. Good. I've been working with her in obedience and a little bit of agitation work. We haven't gotten into personal protection work, but the idea is to actually work with her in the future and get her more into personal protection work. Um, guys, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time in English, not necessarily in Spanish. It's because it's interesting. Everything I've experienced here with uh, the dog training world and community. I, uh, I've been here in the Dominican Republic, in the market of the Dominican Republic training dogs and actually I've also worked uh, dogs in Mexico and, and also in the United States. But I've been everywhere here in the Dominican Republic. This country is very small, so um, I could say I've worked dogs from every corner of the country. And a lot of interesting cases have uh, gotten to, to me. Um, and, and I've learned a lot um, from them. And I, I've learned a lot from their handlers, their owners, which is not the same, which is not the same. So uh, I actually wanted to make this because of the, my style and the style I've developed uh, training and working with dogs in the DR. I have backgrounds from different schools, let's say like that. And my first instructor was from Germany. Um, I haven't talked to him for a long time. And, and I could understand um, the way he, he handled dogs. And then I went to the United States and I learned from American um, master trainers. Um, one of them is my friend, very, very good friend, Ethan Hall, and who owns a, a canine company in Maryland, Brookville, Maryland, um, with the name of uh, Capital Canine. And I learned a lot from Ethan. Then I, and then I came here and kept working with pets. By pets, I mean pet dogs, as opposed to working dogs. And clients, dogs that actually call me and, and well, the dogs didn't call me, the, the clients call me and they brought their dogs to me. And, and I, they, all of them wanted more obedience work and, and not, not, it's not even necessary, not the sports obedience work, not the Chutsun or the KNVP or the PSA obedience uh, work. Uh, I, I actually, I could say here right now that I, we've done very few and we've worked very, very, very few dogs for competition in obedience and, and sports. Um, everything I've, almost everything, I've done in regards to dog training and, and dog work here has been more for the real world and our world and the way we live and all the uh, stimuli we have around us and, and the cars and the noise and the motorcycles and, and potty train in the apartments in the houses, problems that my clients have experienced and had with their, their dogs. 
getting out of their house, of their perimeter, barking, excessive barking, um, behavior problems, aggression, a lot of uh, aggression cases, pulling on leash, impulses, different types of impulses, you know, behavior, impulse that has to be with aggression, with hunting, with prey drive, with lack of work in instinctive activities for the dogs, lack of socialization, excitement, different impulses in, in the behavior of the dogs that the humans get to, but we control ourselves better if we have the ability to and we have education, because not all the humans control their emotions very well. But this is a non-stop work, right? Even, even in humans, it's, it's also in dogs. So it's different in dogs than humans also because <laughs> I'm not a human psychologist. I uh, even, you know, humans have, we humans, right? Because I'm human. We have child psychology, young adolescent psychology, young adult, adult and then very very um, well mature psychology i mean if you if you want to look at look at it that way um, in dogs specifically because because i work with dogs even though i understand other species and i can actually work with the uh, background and and the communication and the conditioning experience and knowledge I have and interaction, animal interaction and communication I have with the dogs, I can actually I actually understand other species and I could probably work with other species understanding, you know, which species can handle more negative reinforcement, positive punishments, negative punishment or no positive punishment at, at all. It has to be done through positive reinforcement and cla classical conditioning and, and all that. So dogs can handle, obviously, punishment. And when I say punishment, it's positive punishment, not necessarily negative, because negative, I mean, it's not, but it's when you want some type of discomfort to, to a punishment, physically, not only verbally, right? But it's when the dog really feels it in the body, you know, hit, a pop, a choke, a hit with your body then you use body language and all that to control the dog and correct the dog behavior depending on how intense that dog is then how much force you need to use in that correction. So I've learned a lot in this market, in this world and with all the cases that I've actually worked and I've created and modified, it's not, it's not like I've created I didn't create it. I've actually modified and and I've made my own style of working dogs and training dogs in obedience and control for the real world and even security work. You know, because we're not doing here sports. We're not Actually, due to the uh, lack of people that work with dogs here in the Dominican Republic, all the challenges that we have economically, I mean, 
to have dogs and work with dogs it's maintain them move from one place to the other with um, the equipment everything you know the equipment we buy to be able to work with them it's it's an expensive sport or hobby or passion depending on where you're coming from I mean you could call it one of those three for me it's it's blended with my life I mean I do martial arts I train dogs I analyze and study about security and provide consulting services I work in security when there are con contracts and jobs out there otherwise I'll be training my physical conditioning, throwing kicks, working on my on, on my Chinese boxing, my Kung Fu, my Jiu Jitsu. And, and I, I blend it with, with dog training. Dog training, I, I combine it. I don't, I don't, I'm at the point that I do everything all, all, all at once. Because I've done it since I'm a little kid, basically. I started training dogs when I was really training dogs when I was 15 years old, I'm 39. But martial arts, I started martial arts when I was six. So, for me, I do it and I combine it with my training. I, you know, put something that I learned in Taekwondo in one dog training session, then in Taekwondo, I bring something that I learned from a dog or from a dog training session and it's, it's a very cool mix and you'll see more videos that I'll be posting you know with us combining the uh, dog training with the martial arts and all that this being said this style that I am using to work in correct the dogs and give leash pressure, spatial pressure, body pressure, body corrections, body language, energy work. I'm studying the energy, the flow of energy with Tai Chi, Master Smet. He Smet, he met Kung Fu. I say hi to them. It's helping me a lot with the dogs, with the breathing communicate with the dogs and be able to communicate to them what I want or they communicate to me what they want or how we can get to a balance without even touching each other through energy work. Breathing, controlling the breathing because the dog is very agitated. I gotta control my breathing in a fight. There is a lot of stress. Look at that, you know, the uh, Capitol riot the other day. Look at those, like, President Biden called them mob in, in group bringing, you know, overwhelming the police, coming, pushing, going forward. How do you actually, with all that noise, ah, 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 you know, there's throwing things and everything, how do you? maintain your control your emotions to be able to perform and well respond well be able to emotionally and intellectually and with the training that you have res respond to that even though you have that chaos all around you and then if you get attacked move and block and we direct and then neutralize and then the other one comes and then the other one comes. Uh, detain, detain this one, backup comes, they get this one, they get another one. You hit one, you neutralize the other one. Ones while you're stepping back, the other ones come forward. Hey, don't move, verbal commands, body interaction, body interaction in terms of physically getting involved already, breaking the balance on the guys, hitting if you have to, then getting the baton out. And here come the intermediary weapons where the dogs, the canines, are involved. The pepper spray, ah, 
move back, back away, guy back comes, you need to hit him, move, move, move. Guns are drawn, you need to shoot the ground because you need now to use lethal force because a lot of people are coming towards you, people keep coming, keep coming, hey! Now another guy gets a gun, now there's a gunfight over there, cover and everything. Hopefully, then you get with your teammate, get everything under control, um, people protected there. Imagine now doing all that with a dog next to you. <laughs> That's also training, yeah. But that dog gets agitated even 300% more than any other people that's around with all, everything that's going around. And all the noise and people screaming and throwing and the guy with aggressive behavior and invading your personal space and you physically involved, pushing him back, and then the dog here, no, okay, you back away, okay, I'm gonna send my dog, you don't step back. Now all people come, you send this dog to this one, then the other guy comes, you detain, neutralize this one, the other guy comes over here, you are moving your back up and your team needs to help, otherwise you're alone with five against five, six, eight guys, and your dog next to you also trying to control the situation. You see and you realize, okay, uh, Pluto come, because ours come, hey, no. And then you back away, back away, back away. And you're also backing away, right? Because there are too many people. Your dog can fight eight guys or 10 guys. You, you maybe hit a few. You had your baton, but also they're getting too close. Your pepper spray, you don't want to shoot. You don't want to kill anyone there, but you have your gun drawn. Back. Yeah, they're winning, right? They, they're they gaining terrain, but you're with your dog. Your dog is like, yeah, he wants to go forward. You need to go back because there's too many people. Imagine doing all that, the control you need to have, your obedience work and the work and, and the the real work you need to have with your dog and yourself, not only with your dog, yourself, to be able to succeed and, and not even succeed. Get out of that situation as safe as possible. I'm sorry about my English, guys. I haven't been speaking English for a long time. Or do your job and, and be able to control and protect, you know, the people that are in the back and you are the first line of defense or the last line of defense. Now the only thing you got there is to fight. Combat. Use of force, obviously, because, you know, with these people working, it's not, uh, talking does not work. Having a line of police officer with shields does not work. Having a line of police officer with shields, helmets, you know, using their batons does not work and pepper spray does not work. It's not working because they're coming in, they're pushing, barric kicking the barricades and everything. Uh, you are the point I need to use your dogs, the canine units to help you. They could actually, I mean, with the uh, attack muscle, they could actually knock out three or four when I redirect them. Attack that one, boom, okay, attack that one, boom, okay, attack that one, boom. Here, come here. Platz, stay, Platz means down, down, stay. Alert. Attack that one, boom, and then come back. I mean, it's like a yo-yo. Or if you call it like that in English, you send and then retrieve, eh? Then you send him and then retrieve, and then send him and retrieve. It's like a boomerang. So, this is the real life, guys. This is not sports. And this has happened to me also in obedience work. My style, 
uh, so oh, I'm on camera. Behave. <laughs> My style, you know, the body movement, the leash pressure, leash correction. Obviously, I train martial arts. I have a lot of that, you know, with the Kung Fu, yeah, see, it helps. The uh, body movement, the flow, the uh, flexibility, the stretch work I do, yoga helps. Uh, the breathing parts, not only martial arts, also, you know, meditation. Meditation helps me with it because they're very agitated. <laughs> you need to calm, otherwise you'll just lose your patience and, and get worse in them. So all this has actually made a style in me and and I and it's a combination of different schools, different instructors, books I've read, classes I have taken, seminars I've taken, and in the end, and most importantly, Every dog I've touched and worked with has taught me something. And I've here, I could say, in the Dominican Republic, and also in the United States, and Mexico, but not like here. Here, I've actually worked, I could say, with more than, not almost, more than 800, almost a thousand dogs through other trainers, through my dog carers, you know, the ones that help me, the assistants, through their owners, through their handlers that I've touched. If, if I get, you know, everything in a pack or some, it's, it's almost a thousand. So I've got a lot of experience, I could say. So for the real world, I mean, it's an urban obedience here that I do a lot. It's not a chutsun or KNVP or PSA obedience when they call me and they pay for the for that service because I charge that I mean I live out of this. They just want me sometimes to solve problems for them and to help them solve problems because they want the dog but they need professional help to be able to have it. There are problems that they're dealing with in their lives. And now the dog has exacerbated those problems because having a dog, is, it's a personal animal. It's a personal companion. It's a family pet or it's a, for the security uh, handlers out there, police, military, even therapists for the people that need support uh, emotionally with their dogs, um, medical cases over there. It, there. There are also tools that we use, not only our friends and whatever you want to call them, best friends, companions, uh, my pet, they're tools. They are actually tools that we use also to help them accomplish objectives and work. And, and they tell us a lot when you know how to read them. It's like when you're doing vigilance work, patrol work, they bring their ears up. You see the dog and then the handler see to the front and then the dog moves the ear to the left. The handler sees that move the head to the left, the handler moves the head to the left, and what, what's going on over there, you, you know, with your flashlight, then the, the dog turns to the right, his head to the right, then you turn to the right, because what's going on, you know? So the dog is telling you where that sound that you are not hearing is coming from, and where this, that suspicious activity is coming from, 
which you are not texting yet. <laughs> the dog is texting me for you. To the right, to the left. But the dog is the one that's telling me where to look. And then, oh, there's a person moving over there. Hey, what are you doing there? But the dog is already has already told you. To prepare yourself because there's something moving over there suspicious. So this is the experience I've gotten and, and I mix a few things, topics here, but I wanted to say this in this session and I'm gonna put a little bit of the way I start working the urban obedience with the dog because in the end, the people that bring me, my clients, bring me these dogs and, and, and in the end, it's actually what we all need because we don't do sports. Uh, not because we don't want to do sports, it's just that uh, because of all the things that I said. And not only that, but also it's our real life. I mean, you want to have a train and a very uh, well-behaved and manageable animal. Doesn't matter if you're using it for work or just for, you know, to to enjoy him. So it's our life out there. I mean, we don't have a chutsum train out there everywhere every time I go to the supermarket or every time I go to the gas station or when I'm walking out there to get coffee or just when I go to my parents' house or you know, every time I wake up, go to do my things and then go to work and then come to my house. I mean, I mean uh, is there a PSA train out there, world? That you gotta do focus healing with your dog? That you gotta do sit down, stay, glass, uh, uh, uh. No, man. I just want a few things. Come when I call you, please. Bonding is very important here. This is another topic. Um, control, we control good sit, good down stay, good sit stay. Do not pull on the leash when I'm walking you on the leash. Respect the leash. Doesn't matter whether the leash is five foot long, um, 12, 15, just don't pull on it, don't put it tense, you know, just respect the length. And off leash is different, off leash is you have a perimeter you can move without breaking the rules. But when I come and I tell you to walk next to me, let's walk next to me and then you do your healing. But you have a space where you could stay back or move forward. I mean, it's not focus healing 90 degrees or this and that. No. So I want to show a little bit of this obedience style that I've worked, which is urban obedience, because I don't, well, I mean, we're not even doing it in, for hiking, we're not doing it in the mountains, we're not doing that. I mean, it's different work. I mean, when people go to the park here, go, I mean, they need their dogs on the leash. When they go to the airport, when they go to Zona Colonial to drink some coffee. When they go for a walk, run, or take them to party, they, they have their dogs on the leash. They take the leash off for some time, but then come and then. So, I wanted to show a little bit this work. It's different. It's like, I would call it real world or 
urban obedience or real world obedience and control. Not nothing connected to sports or the uh, focusing in the uh, very very neat way of seating. Do this with the dog side. I need to do this with or the ones that we're going to be doing some sports with. Other, other than that, it's just, you know, I just want a well-behaved dog with controlling pulses and in security that when I activate them and, and I, did, I need them to do their job, whatever it is, if I'm for my personal protection or we're working in security, patrolling work, intervention, or if we are police and riots, dogs, or we are military, canine units and all that. So I just want them to do their job and I want to have control as much as possible of them because a weapon without control, good control is a, is a problem. So thank you for watching these, my friends. Then I'll post a few videos of me doing some of these obedience style and the way I do with the puppies and and some of my clients' dogs and and other dogs that I'm working a little bit more the uh, sport obedience you know the focus healing the healing but that. Here in this country, we don't really need that. We just need a well-behaved dog and control dog and and whatever I tell them to do, to do it as fast as possible, as neat as possible, and as uh, effective as possible. Thank you for watching. Leo Julio Ranciere over here. I just wanted to say this. This is great. I've been I've been very excited to make these videos and people are watching it and it's good that because i i believe and i feel and i know i know that i have a lot that i can give and i can teach and i can out there help yeah yeah so thank you for watching take care